This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Jennifer! Hi, how are you? How are you? I am fabulous. How are you? I am obviously in heaven because there's like an angel hanging out over my shoulder. What the heck? Yeah. Playing, playing the guitar. From that fancy book that I send to everybody, which I absolutely love. Oh, that's so cool. To the afterlife. It's amazing. Well, it's our, you know, it's a culmination of our work. I mean, it is amazing if you think about it. Um, I'll be talking about it uh, at this uh, conference, The Art of Living, The Art of Dying to Live or Living to Die. I forget what it is. But you can find out uh, how to sign up for it at richmartini.com. Or if you're a fan of our Facebook pages, we have it on there as well, the both of us do. Very good. And I, the lineup is uh, in the last day, it's Deepak Chopra and then Dr. Even Alexander, the guy who wrote Proof of Heaven. Yep. Yours truly. And then, <laughs> and so I, you know, I've been thinking about like, what am I going to talk about? Of course, I'll be talking about our work mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's why I was invited, you know. It's one thing for me to talk about our work, but it's another thing to have an example of our work, you know, as a podcast, people can see right. it themselves and go, what the heck is that? What, <laughs> what are they doing? It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm very excited for you. So, well, well, you know, hopefully, hopefully I will, I'll be able to tell a story within an hour, you know instead of like be a preamble so tell us about you my dear how are you doing what's going on what's happening just a lot of events you know i am very um fortunate to do this work and i'm grateful that i can and it's every single day like i looked at my schedule and i had a little bit of anxiety from it <laughs> just because every lunch every dinner seems well, scheduled and I'm trying, but the good news, so besides the work that I absolutely love doing, good couple good things. The Rams are in the Super Bowl. If anyone has seen Heaven Can Wait, they would love the Rams. That's right. I've been a Ram fan ever since that movie. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. And yeah, um, I was rooting for them. So I moved, thank you, thank you, clients. I moved all my clients to Friday <laughs> because of the Super Bowl. And then I am very excited. I get to take Blake to UCLA tomorrow to tour the campus. Wow, that'll be fun. Oh my gosh, your daughter is... I know, I know, I know, I know. If I have it my way, I want her close because I'm not ready for her to go, but... No, I think that's a great idea. Of course, you know, even if she lived on campus, which would make sense, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, Westwood's such a lovely place. It's a great school, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Everybody knows, you know, they want to get in. Yeah, so I get to do that. And I'm having a lot of fun. I'm able to travel and do this work. This is what I love because I don't have to be anywhere to do it. I can be everywhere and do it. Right? Very true, very true. Um, and I found myself doing more and more of these sessions, you know, helping people access their council uh, yeah. over the past week. It's been unusual. Because I normally, you know, just say, uh, you know, call so and so, talk to so and so, read a book. Because no, you know. I'm sending clients that found that have found us that do sessions with me. I'm yeah. telling them to go to you for the same reason because you do you do you you do it in a way that I still laugh about that we found out, you know, with Morton, whatever his name is, Philip, no, Michael Nude, Michael Nude, Michael Nude, yeah. Um, in Fishbar, I remember it, how he said, he goes, you're going to change the way it's done. And you have, and it's, and it's effective and it's amazing. Well, I, th I, you know, I think the value is to show people that they're guides, they're teachers, they're mm -hmm. council members, the people who help or have been helping you for all your lifetime. They're available. They're not like distant uh, icons on a mountain that you have to climb up the mountain to get to ask the guy inside the cave, you know, what's the meaning of life? And they're like, dude, it was the hike up here. That was the meaning of life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I'll have some. Thank you. It's, Is that a cappuccino? Uh, it's a cappuccino. A little, bit of, <laughs> a little bit of a mix, which I love. All right. Very good. Now, listen, Luana, not that uh, uh, I'm just recalling maybe a dream that I might've had. 
recently. Um, I'm calling the move the show that I sent to you. Did you research it? Yeah, I did. I took a look. It's hilarious. Very it's good. So good. Yeah, very funny. But that's, that's a show that's about a like, it's show kind of set. Like your class, though, well, right? it's a, yeah, it's a show set in Australia where a dentist, this woman, suddenly has somebody show up and in her life and she's trying to figure out like who are you what are you doing he's a musician and he's trying to figure out what he's doing there too because he has no idea like what am i so it's a funny uh the guy's very tall i must say in terms of this show what's it called it's called spirited and it's spirited. On, and it's on prime amazon prime okay cool and i think it was made in 2010 but uh yeah was- i just i tuned it in for a little bit i got a chance to check it out but I kind of feel like that with a couple, of, like I was mentioning this, there is somebody that, um, Eddie Hassel, who's passed away, where I feel like he's around just like that guy. Like I can talk to him. It's kind of, oh. again, I talk to people all the time that are not well, here. But he's like a real that- person that I talk to and his mom and dad are amazing parents and they also can feel him and see him. She wow. can actually, so Sandy, I hope, so. hi Sandy, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> she can actually, kind of she talks herself out of it but she hears him i'm like that's such a gift you know but this show reminds me of him and his family eddie and his family well and that idea uh, and we've talked about it with our uh group and our podcast before this process of opening yourself up to the possibility that right. you know people do have experiences all the time and then they think to themselves oh you know i maybe i made that up or they think, you know, I'm not available. I'm not like Jennifer. I can't, you know, I can't see people or I can't hear. Well, that's true. That's fine. It's even better sometimes. Trust me. I was with Cindy and I've never seen so, I'm like sleeping with the medium. I'm kidding around. We were sharing a room. I've never seen so much activity in my life. Wow. When we were in Oregon last week. Oh, wow. Crazy. If I had it my way, I would have slept with the lights on. But I just, I kind of, and this is something that you guys should know. Like, if you feel unrest, just say, "Can I please go to sleep?" And it's usually the last thing that I remember. Very good. That's right. Can we just shut the door for a little bit, or turn down the volume of all these people talking to me? Mm-hmm. But that idea of, so you know, for for our you know first time listeners or our last time listeners, the idea <laughs> of. You know, they want to talk to somebody. They want to communicate with someone. And you and I have spoken about this. Uh, Audible communication isn't the only form of communication, obviously. Images, uh, places. They love to give signs. Like I said to somebody this morning, I said to him, I'm like, listen, she's showing, it was a daughter who passed away, who was killed. I'm like, she's showing you signs about something that he was asking about. And then when we hung up, all the pictures from her started floating on his phone and it was nothing, you know, they just started up here and he's like, I cannot believe that just happened, you know, and they are so good at electronics. Well, I, let me ask you about that. So this happened to us the other day, we were talking about our dear friend, Charles Grodin, who had passed away last year. And, um, and my wife uh, has, has done some help with people and legal issues. And it, and I said, "Um, you know, you should, Maybe focus on this issue that Chuck Charles Grodin was so adamant about the felony murder rule, where right. if somebody loans their car to somebody and they right. go off and commit a crime with a car, you're responsible for it and, and right. they'll put you in prison for life. And all the major democracies, all the democracies in the world have gotten rid of that rule, that law, except ours. Anyway, and I just said casually as I'm walking out the door. You know, maybe you should focus on that a little bit and, and try to help people with that concept. And apparently I got to the car and I'm driving away and suddenly the phone rings and it was like, oh, my God. And they were the television had a uh, there was a show on, uh, you know, watching. I think it was the Supreme Court talking about the Supreme Court. And there was just like this new thing where they're talking about what's going on. And suddenly it flashed it cut to a court case about the felony murder rule. And that's what they were talking about as if it was specific. And then every device in the house suddenly was carrying that same broadcast, whether it was Alexa or whether it was somebody's self. It, so it was very strange. So right. let's let's ask our friend Chuck, if you don't mind. Lou, I know you're in touch <laughs> with him. How'd you do that, buddy? That's so funny. <laughs> okay, so I moved my chair. I changed chairs because I love this chair better than the other chair that's in this room. 
Okay. It was sitting right next. It's a chair that rolls, and Chuck just jumped in that chair and rolled it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny. He's like, "You have that for me, right? For our guests." I'm like, "Well, yeah. I never thought of it like that." Um. Okay. Hold on a second. He says, "That's easy." He's like, "Rich, it's easy." He. <laughs> You know how he, I don't know if he does this, like crosses his legs and just like, oh. So well, it's a little bit what Jack Benny used to do, you know, okay. and he was a fan of, of course, you know, great comedians like Jack Benny, but okay. they're like, uh, whatever, not a big deal. He goes, when you have as many spirits collectively, he goes, it's a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Wow. Piece of cake. And so, and, and so is that a, a multi, I mean, who's creating the idea? I mean, look, it, it's somebody, cause we checked the tape. Somebody clearly had pushed the wrong button in the broadcast because it was on all the devices. We could roll it back. It just didn't come out of nowhere, but it was recorded. So right. my question is, is like, is, are you asking that person to push the wrong button on the console who's broadcasting the thing or I mean, how, or does everybody work in concert? Everybody works in concert. So it's a little bit more complicated, he's saying. Okay. We find an opening that we can do this, that we can manipulate whatever device or time, whatever's involved in it. So we saw that opening. And I'm checking to see, was it the news people or was it, he said it was everybody. Everybody, including the thought for me to say, you should work on the fellow, because I have never said There's that the, sentence in my that's life. That's the cherry on the top. He just showed me the cherry on top. Okay. Like, or the icing on the cake. He icing that. on the cake. That's the cherry on top. The actual stating the thing. But right. it also helped us focus because I said it aloud. And then it's suddenly all the devices switched to that channel without even them being on. But the idea of, you know, let's focus on yeah. something. Go ahead. He also says that you're open enough to have that happen. And to discuss it to everybody yeah. in the house to go, you're not going to believe it, but I got to the car and, and, you know. Yeah. And he said that he, he's been talking to you about it for the last like five weeks. Very good. And in fact, I, I appeared in a documentary. I mean, they shot the footage last you must, week. You must be famous. <laughs> well he was famous but because i knew him and because he took me on the merv show and a couple of loved what you brought up he said and i i hold on he said especially the last part now jennifer and i have not spoken about this i did not tell her anything about this documentary and he, he did tell me he was doing a documentary and it had to do with charles Oh, okay. All right. But I, I didn't but tell you what it. I said. No, no. Said. No, no, I didn't tell you whether it was good or bad. Right. I could have said, right. you know, so, I was terrible or something, but. So he said, he's saying, which you already know, but it was the very ending. And it was almost like a wink or you saw him wink, mm. like with what you did. Like, good job, buddy. And he said that he goes, your view was so different. There was an underlying friend. He goes, he, he's like, that I'm so great. And then I <laughs> help people and I make people laugh and I sing. He goes, but you took all of those underlying threads and you made it into a big bow. I did. I took you the did. time to really yeah, think long you, and- You ahead. knew me, uh, other than my wife, better than anybody. And he goes, sometimes maybe even a little bit more, but- he goes, you got me and how, how grateful I am. He's like, what if I didn't believe in this work? How miserable would it be for me? Well, he didn't when he was on the planet and we would have quite a few debates about it. In fact, he would banish me from certain rooms in the house. Like, oh, you're talking about that? I think because it, it, it and Chuck, maybe you could talk about he it. Didn't want it. He didn't want to talk about mortality. Thank you. I knew that was the issue. And so I, I would, I would try. Mortality. Would, it wasn't what you were saying. It was the fact that I didn't want to die. So let me ask you this. So when you became aware that you were still on the planet, let's say still uh, alive, did you reflect on any of the conversations we had or was it just a whole new bit of information? No, 
no, I got to have all of those conversations we had because it's not really, because it's not that much fun knowing that you were always right. <laughs> he goes, oh, what's maybe the timing is off. He goes, but he's so funny. He's just like, yeah. I he, mean, he was right. He goes, every single time he opened up his mouth and I didn't want to hear it, but he was right. Wow. Goes, you know, and Glenn, you've been right after. And Listen, the, things you, the things that you have felt from him, from Charles. So all the people that are tuning in and listening to this, and you've been having an argument with somebody in your life, and you're like, well, I'm right, and you're wrong, you know, blah, blah. I mean, who wouldn't want to hear that from somebody on the <laughs> flip side to come back? And so I can't have been right all the time. But, but he, he said the timing was... So he's talking about timing wasn't maybe maybe be off but what's funny is that i tell people because when i discuss past lives which i you know i believe in even though this is the only life that counts right now um i'm like i can't prove it that's the only thing i can't stand is i can't prove it i'm like there better be a huge lit, you know line of people up there because <laughs> the whole the whole concept is like we won't know until we get there right right but you have that he said you were right. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> He's there. <laughs> well, I and I also got I got to ask you at the very end of this interview, and it was about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, and there's going to be a lot of really, I mean, not, there's going to be a lot of famous people in this documentary. And and if there's ten seconds of me talking, I'm honored to be part of it. But at some point, he asked the same question he asked Robert De Niro and Martin Short and Steve Martin. Uh, sum up Charles Grodin in a word or you know in a, in a con when I say Charles Grodin what comes to mind integrity for me but well ahead. you know I had thought about that and that was going to say that so integrity was going to be the word and I don't but, know him I know him more now than I did before but that's so but I thought about that because here's a, here was a guy who was a loyal friend he was an empath this is that was the string that I pulled together is that he listened as an actor he listened to other actors with empathy, and then he would react to what they were saying. And then in life, he listened to prisoners talking about being stuck in prison with empathy and how can I help them? So his whole journey, and then on the talk show, he would listen to the guests and then ask them about their journey. And so I, empath is gonna be the word along with integrity, but instead I said, the love of my life, Mm. which was such a weird like uh, what, what excuse me what <laughs> and, but I, I it just popped out of my mouth and I thought well did he say that I mean what that was that his joke <laughs> no he always knew that you guys had a bromance and he goes as much as he he just couldn't get enough of you and what you would say even if it drove him crazy and Never vice versa and he's just showing like like if there was a soul that kind of split you guys both had that same that the same kindness in humanity of wanting, you know, people not to suffer unnecessarily. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And also the idea that comedy. Your, your, your endpoints were the same, he said. Wow, that's sweet. But also that idea that comedy can heal people. We don't think of it that way, but a laugh, a belly laugh at something. I mean, he would make jokes about his relationship with Miss Piggy. He had this whole secret, you know, affair, and then he would go on Carson or, you know, Letterman, and then they'd show a photograph of him and Miss Piggy, and he'd look at the camera and go, where'd you get that? <laughs> Who took that picture? And he would do this whole thing as if there was video somewhere of him and Miss Piggy in a room alone, and that he was terrified that it would come out. <laughs> I mean, that kind of humor, it so takes you away from whatever your health issue is, your trouble in your life the journey you're on, you're not thinking about that at all. And by it, being able to laugh at okay. something, it really changes your disposition because you come away from that experience of like, I, I feel better, you know? Yeah, well, just by saying that when you wake up in the morning, okay, actors, thank you. Try not to do that again. <laughs> you can't help but laugh, but it works. And you oh, know, I know what it is, Chuck. I'm sorry to interrupt. It was the other night. The other night I was... I, this was a couple of days after the interview. I wasn't really thinking about him. And then we had, I had two nights where I had dreams where he was in. One was uh, on a movie set somewhere. And I was sort of 
not talking to him, but I was watching him and he was like, you know, working. And then he was looking at a newspaper and he was circling the fact that the movie The Jerk was on somewhere. You know, that's my favorite movie. All right. Well, I, I, don't, I didn't know I that. I have never laughed so hard. And I made my son watch it with me because it was so funny. And my son's just like, no one could get away with that now. <laughs> so, but of course, Steve Martin, Steve Martin was close friends with Chuck and he's going to appear in this documentary, but he was circling it because he said, oh, that's funny. I think the kids are going to enjoy that. And he was referring to like what, his grandkids or, or your yeah. kids. I don't know. But I, I was aware of that. And the second one was that thing of you sort of waking up and, and thanking people. And I was at the end of a dream with him. And I was like, well, thank you for appearing in the dream. And then he, he said, of course, Richard. And I said, so what are you doing? Because I thought follow up question. He said, well, I'm I'm tending to my garden. And he wasn't a gardener. I mean, he had beautiful estate with gardens, but he wouldn't be out there. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I, I'm working with my herbs. And I thought, I'm thinking to myself, what is it? And then I realized two of his closest friends, Herb Gardner, the guy who wrote A Thousand Clowns, whose house he was married at, and Herbie Kaplan, the name popped into my head, somebody that was his childhood best friend, Wow. That he kept friends for for life, who I met once in Pittsburgh 30 years ago. Suddenly his name was right in my mind. The two herbs that he was hanging out with in his garden. And I just thought that is not a joke I could ever construct, can, you know, or think about or come up with or even assign to him. So uh, what can I say other than, Amazing. wow, not only does life go on, but comedy goes on. Yes, it does. There's a great podcast called Smartless. And it's with Those other podcasts? I know. Can you believe that? They had Michael Moore on there. So regardless to what you think of Michael Moore. Oh, I like was, Michael. Moore. I, I met him. It is so interesting because he has the same view of we just need more comedy. We need to have more laughter. That's what's going to save us. You know, he was talking about, you know, the gun laws and everything about, not the gun laws, but how Canada has more guns than we do, and but yet they don't have the shooting. So well, how does that? Yeah, what's up with that? And they talked about how, you know, if somebody comes in the middle of the night and opens up the door, nobody shoots anybody. They're just like, oh, come on in. Yeah, you know? <laughs> hello, my, no, no, it's not true. You know, but you, got, you do that right. here, they shoot you, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. And he goes, he goes, they also have the one law they have for handguns is that you have to, they're trying to pass, is you have to have your wife sign off on it, your ex-wife sign off on it. If you have one, your girlfriend sign off on it to say that you're mentally okay to have one. Right. And so <laughs> and not gonna use it on that. <laughs> right. I mean, not too many people <laughs> would have handguns, maybe in Canada, but not here. You know? <laughs> no, no, it's it is. It's really funny. insightful and brilliant. I appreciate that. That's funny. Yeah, it was wow. funny. They just they just I love Jason Bateman, Will Arnett. They're just amazing. Well, Jason Bateman is very was very close to Chuck. Oh, maybe that's why you put it in my head. That's yeah, nice. and they uh I they, didn't know that. Yeah, they did them. They did a film uh, not too long ago, but you know, before Aww. obviously, when Chuck older years, and I and I know that they became fast friends. And then I think I mentioned this uh, in yeah. Chuck's backyard. He had a like a path that you could get on a golf cart and ride around. It took you about a twenty minutes to ride around the state. And he had put animals out along the estate. Right. We've talked okay. about that. But Jason yeah. Baton supplied the voices of the monkeys that That's are in the tree now i remember it. so so i have never had it i've never met him so i've never had a chance to chat with him about that and talk about mutual well, i feel like i know him because it's the only other podcast i listen to <laughs> oh no, he's, he's, he's a very it's funny guy great. yeah it's they've done an amazing job if you want some laughter speaking of laughter and an amazing job is luana got a list of anybody we need to talk to today let me check i put luana and chuck there, there you go um Huh, okay. Elvis. Well, that's a big name. I mean, is it Elvis Presley or Elvis uh, Casello? No, I'm kidding. Is I, there any, I, saw Elvis, I saw Elvis Presley. Okay, oh. very good. All right, very good. Elvis, the last time you came to visit us or had a conversation with us, I asked you a question about who greeted you on the other side, and you talked about a child that you were supposed to have that didn't happen, 
and that that's who greeted you and you were met with overwhelming love. Mentioning that with somebody before his wife. Yeah, like, he did say it was not okay. his wife. He's saying that else. again. Okay. Then okay. Then. Yeah, he did say that. Well, no, I appreciate you repeating that. So what, what is yeah. it you want to talk about today, please? Or you want to expand upon that? Oh. I feel like he's saying, or the one is saying, I'm like, so what do you guys want to talk about? And it's about how to get your voice. And I'm like, is it, are you talking about getting your voices out there? Or are you talking about manifesting songs and music? And it's, they want to talk about how to get them to hear you, which- On the other side. On the other side. Okay. And so we've talked about this a little bit because- I know, but it's just odd. I, I, right. That, it seems backwards. But, but by, by addressing this, it's important. So Luana, you've mentioned it before. It's like you guys on the other side need to slow down your frequency so that you can sort of be on the same denser level that we're on. Is that what you mean? Yes. Hold on. They mentioned me because I do it all day long. Yeah. So I never, oh, it's, it's like constantly practicing. So I'm constantly practicing talking to the other side, whether I want to, whether I am. I mean, that's just what I'm doing. And so my voice carries very, very strong, they're saying. So they're showing me, they're showing me and how my voice is very strong on the other side. Um, and that's because I use it so much for the other side. Like my, you're, you practice so much. Yeah, I practice so much. I laugh, thank you. I never turn this off. Why would I want to, right? But I just don't go around reading everybody. But that way, when some, because I'm getting questions asked of me from the time I wake up to the time that I go to bed at every dinner, I usually at every lunch, there's always <laughs> something, but I love what I do. And I'm always going to be there to help my, you know, to do as much as I can. Anyway, that being said, it's a practice they're saying, but give me a second. Ah, interesting. Okay, show me again. Thank you. So they're showing me how, like they showed me like a boomerang. The reason why my voice carries is because I also believe what they're saying. So I believe it and that's what doesn't muffle it or stop it. Granted, sometimes I don't. And I'm like, no, that can't be it. I can't tell you how many times I don't believe the other side and they're always right. I don't know why in the world I think differently. Well, I think, it, I think that helps you us you know what's the word we sort of shift through wheat right. get rid of the chaff so it's stuff that comes through that maybe isn't that important it allows you to because you keep asking is this right is this correct is this right true right and so and so luana from and so to continue this metaphor the idea of so of people on the other side and this is something luana's helped people in our class with they slow themselves down right so there, just, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, you aren't. Go ahead. So she showed me like, so start talking to him because at first you don't believe that you're going to be able to hear that. Even though they're right there, you might not hear them for a couple of days. And that's because of your consciousness, because of your subconscious, not believing in it. So they, so try talking to us, which is projecting our thoughts and then wait for an answer, wait for a sign. It doesn't have to be a voice. I hear voices, but it's not really smart to go around saying you hear voices. <laughs> but it could be a visual. It could be a visual. I get visuals and this is something I talked about with Sandy about, you know, people would, people would die to be able to hear their loved one's voice. You know, where she's like, well, I don't get the pictures. I'm like, that doesn't matter. If you have a knowing, you know, right. feel, feel into it. And sometimes it's a coincidence where, you right. know, the thing that happens because it's like the exact same day that they left, et cetera, et cetera. That's another form of communication of a signal. Right. And they just show, they're showing me like sign, you know, literal signs like street names or, or, you know, every time I looked at a score yesterday, it was 71 for basketball. You know, that was odd that for one, me. So much. Well, let me ask, let's ask Elvis. I mean, cause he's here. And, and is that what you want to talk about? And the question is, 
are you expanding upon something you're thinking about or is there someone you want to communicate with he says the reason why he's communicating part of it was because i believe that i'm talking to him that has taken years of practice with you and feeling confident enough to be able to do that he says that i talk he goes i don't discriminate this is all this i don't discriminate i talk to people that talk to me right the difference is they don't believe it he goes they just <laughs> don't believe that i'm talking to them. i love that that's well, that must be disconcerting to people on the flip because side. Because it's cause... awful. He's like, it's awful. They just don't, he goes, again, they're repeating it. There's no hierarchy, you know? Right. So, but I'm, but I'm saying it must there's be nobody, annoying. He goes, annoying. they're showing, he's like, there's nobody famous over there. They're actually, beside, they're actually showing me you in my mind's eye that you're famous. And that's <laughs> what they That's no, it. You're famous to them because of the work that you're doing. <laughs> right? Oh, what a but disappointment they, when they actually meet me. But I mean, the idea that the reason he's here, let's say, and he wants to re reinforce this to the people out there who there listen. something about today's date, even possibly? Two, like, three, two, two. Yeah. Well, it might be, I'm just saying, so he's trying to say that those people who are at, trying to access him, and they may not be telling anyone, oh, I had a dream about Elvis last night, or I want to tell him something. Then he tries to respond and they don't respond. They don't realize or they don't, concur and that's annoying you see so it's like he's coming to tell us you know that it's annoying at some level all these people who think they want to talk to him and then when he tries to reply they don't listen is that what you're referring to i wouldn't say i, I would jennifer tapped your nose for those listeners meaning yes correct but i mean annoying is my term uh disconcerting but what would you call it Elvis Aaron. Like we're doing it. He goes, we're doing it the other way around, trying to teach you how to talk to us because then you'll believe it. Very good. He goes, we could say all day long that we're with you. We give you signs where you can hear us. You know, we give you pictures in your head. But he goes, you just people just shrug it off. He goes, but if he goes, it helps the voice carry literally by you by setting an intention of what it is that you want. You know an open-ended invitation to have them to come see you right and, and if i'm and if i may let me ask you this question so let's say someone gets in their car and they turn on the radio and there you are singing your song comes up and this the title or the lyric may relate to their lives and it may relate to the thing that you wanted to reply to them or you wanted to point out to them it's not that you're giving a blanket message to everybody you're specifically one-on-one right. -on -one responding to someone's thought or and you're trying to help them is that correct yes and it could be okay thank you it's what we talked about i believe last week it's not going to be some huge epiphany or it's not going to be some huge like people are okay thank you they he goes people in general just want any little sign he goes but really they're thinking of something so big that when we give them little signs, they dismiss it. <laughs> and they're just showing me and how I was when I had, I was a mile offshore in Hawaii and, and hi, kitty cat. And <laughs> Elvis the cat Elvis. playing the piano. <laughs> um, and how two butterflies came by because I wanted to sign from Wayne Dyer and we were a mile offshore and two butterflies. Wayne Dyer, yes, that's right. And I'm like, I don't believe it. And then dolphins started, like, the dolphins started swimming and jumping it like this huge school of dolphins. And I'm like, okay, I'm just being an asshole, <laughs> you know? So uh, it's like okay. little signs, bigger signs, the wave, they're sitting next to you in the car. Ah. It's just little signs, the most subtle signs that might not even make sense to you right then and there. You know, you'll be shown later on, like what they're doing to me now. Like, I don't have it. I'm not thinking of, you know, several years ago, being a mile offshore in Hawaii, they yeah. gave that thought. As an example. Happened. Yeah, yes. yeah. The metaphor. That's, that's, yeah. That's what happens over and over and over again. So, and the, also, it. Elvis, also, we've heard this before, uh, and maybe you can weigh in on it, that idea that, and we heard it from Michael Newton, Morton, the idea that if you just say the name of the person you want to talk to, you start to ask them questions, and when they hear an answer or see an answer before they can even get to the question, then they know that they're on the right path or that they've made a connection. Oh, interesting.
That's so great. Okay, they're showing me something else that for people here. So for instance, I have a great, you know, really good girlfriend of mine, Gretchen, Gretchen Megan. They're an awesome couple. I absolutely love these girls. And she kept popping into my head the other day. I'm like, oh. And then I get a text from her. And I'm like, she beat me. She beat me to it because I was thinking of her. We don't know who thinks of who first, right? Yeah. My daughter and I do this all the time where I'm not even looking at, like, she'll look at a menu, I'll look at a menu, there'll be a thousand things on the menu and we'll pick the same thing. She'll, I'll send myself a text and we just see, and we always do it because we, oh. what, you know, we're so connected. Um, but we now, it's a game to us. It's super fun. It's a game to us. And you could do that with a living. So if somebody pops into your head, it's actually spirit giving you that. So it could be about somebody that's live here, you know? Yeah. So they can give it that, give that to you where you call that person and then that person could give you a sign of some sort. Right. Well, and I also want to ask you about this, Elvis and Luana, which is, so a lot of people then think about this process and they go, well, how come I can't get lottery numbers? Or why can't I cure the cancer that my uncle or my aunt has, or et cetera, et cetera? Why can't I fix this? My thing? dad would still be alive. And so it's that idea of you're said, on a journey. Go ahead. He said no, but he goes, I would have said no. Hard. Well, I mean, look, that I, I did hear my father's voice not too long ago saying, if I had had this particular medicine that I was reading about, he said, I'd still be on the planet. And, it, and it, my instant reaction was, oh, why didn't I know this? Or why didn't I think of this? Or why didn't I study this? And the answer is, well, he is still alive. It's not, you know, I mean. Right. They're just in a different, they're wearing different clothes. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So it's not like he went anywhere, but he's trying to observe or trying to let me know that I can have that conversation with him and not then add, you know, sadness. Go ahead. So the sadness part. So I felt that they were saying, like, because my dad just showed up, I felt like he was saying, remember, Jennifer, how you didn't talk to me. Like, you didn't feel me for a while, for a long time. I always called you. Like, you got me through so much, Richard. Um, and you still do. That being said, he's, I'm like, was it because you weren't there? Like, you were off being busy? He's like, no, I was always there. But your grief was so much. You had so much grief. He said, he was, even if I was shouting, there was just nothing, there's no way for you to hear that when you grieve. So remember that as well. Don't get frustrated because I can't tell you how many clients of mine are like, how come you get a doctor? They even get, I'm like, you're, you, you just, <laughs> you booked the appointment and now you're mad at me because I get a doctor. <laughs> I've had friends say that to me. Why would she appear to you? She was my best friend for 20 years. Right. Why would Luana it's come and talk I'm, to you? I'm like, okay, let's take a, let's go back a second. I'm like, I I can talk to a lot of people's dead people. It doesn't mean it was easy for me to talk to my own, and that was the point as well. Like you might, well, and I and if I, if I may, I remember uh, we were having this conversation, and you noticed your father's uh, an awareness of him, and tears like just went right up to the top, and and you weren't able to speak, and so uh, it was you know my only insight in here is to say, well, if we distract her for a little bit maybe we can continue this conversation. And I said, well, let's ask your father a question. And the question that popped into my mind was, well, how can we help people with grief? And of course I was talking about you, but I asked him to, to answer it like in the third person. Well, the way you can help other people aside from my daughter with grief, he said, you know, you can, if you move it to nostalgia, just to repeat that we've talked about this. Yeah. But I said, so what does that mean? And you looked at me with these tears and said, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about because you were still completely caught up in the emotion, but you heard what he said. So I right. said, well, let's ask him, what does he mean by that? And he said, grief is mostly sad emotions, sad memories. Nostalgia combines the two, happier and sad memories. But when you can move grief to nostalgia, then be you begin the healing process. And yeah. so that's, what I was able to help you do, not to move grief to nostalgia, but to say, just even just to say, let's just think of this from a to purely a, a question 
you know, I'm asking him a question of what does he say? And then from there, we went on these adventures with him. He took us to your Akashic library. He pulled out a volume yeah. of your life and showed us an incident that you did not remember, but he did. Yeah. As well as, as well as taking us to a classroom where we got to meet the teacher in a physics class in deep space. And by the way, I've used, because of your father, I've actually used that technique just in the past few days where I've been in a classroom with somebody and then I'll say, can I talk to the teacher? Because that's, he showed us that we could do that. And then I yeah. then go ask questions about, and the teachers in the classroom, they know so much more than the person I'm talking to. And right. they're trying to translate what they're saying, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. So it was, really, it was a little bit challenging because my dad passed away five years ago on the 31st, on the 30th and so of January. And so like that morning, Fred was trying to distract me, which didn't work. And, I'm just like, <laughs> and I, just, I just sat there, I'm like, I just need to feel it. And then what can I do to honor him? And it was, I was able to work that day. And I had two big, you know, I had two family groups that came in for wine and spirits. What a, what a fun day for me. Like, I love going to work. And yeah. to have my day, and I knew those people that day, and every day is special, but that day it got me that distraction. And I was helping people. Like, it truly is whatever you want, give it away. Like, you, if, you know, we hear this all the time. And that's what they're saying too. Like, if you want to talk to them, help somebody. Like, do something that they love to do. Put yourself in that space and that will connect you even further. That's brilliant. If you really want to talk to them, do something for somebody else. Yes. So it might be somebody they love. It might be something they love, but it's a way of also connecting with them because you're now taking the time to talk to their son or their daughter or their nephew or the thing that they were passionate about. And then to talk about them in present tense. So that idea of, all right, so Elvis, is there anything else you wanted to mention? I know we're going to lose Jennifer in a few. No, no, hold on one second. Oh, you got a while? Okay. I thought well, that's... I don't know if I have a while. Just give me a second. Um, so I have 10 minutes. Okay. Close we can talk time. to a lot of people in 10 minutes. So, uh, Mr. Presley, is there anything you else you want to talk about in terms of... Or Luana, do you have somebody else that you need us to chat with? Thank you. <laughs> He said, be kind when you talk to them. And that's interesting because he saw, he saw, he showed me like a, a, a picture of his, you know, of his ex, his wife, his ex-wife yelling at him when he was dead. His widow. Yeah. <laughs> like yelling at him when he was, you know, and he said, a lot of people do, he goes, you, we can't, it's not that we don't want to respond. You, it's another form of where they can't, we can't hear them. Wow, that's yeah. brilliant. So in other words, when you want to talk to someone who's not on the planet, and, be and kind. Be kind because there's so many people that have unfinished business. And that's probably why a lot of people make appointments with me or, you know, because they feel the guilt will keep you away from the answers. So if you feel guilty about something with them, and it's usually something that they, nine out of 10 times, almost 10 out of 10 times, they're like, oh, please stop feeling bad about that. There's so much more for us to talk about. But if you have any ounce of guilt of something that you feel you're doing wrong that would upset them or that you're, you know, you did something wrong while they were alive, they don't want that. That's going to keep them from you. Guilt, anger is going to keep them from you. And again, they're there. It's not, it's not them not being there. It's just that your mind will, is putting, it's putting your head in a safety net saying okay we can't talk to that person or we you know it overrules anything that you can do anything that the frequency might be able to be correct and so Luana is that what you wanted to talk to us about today as well that idea that frequencies need to be clean and simple tuning into the afterlife says it all she says <laughs> tuning into the afterlife says it all and, and and you know the the book we do talk about frequency a lot because you know it turns yeah. out that everything is frequency. I mean, light, Math, color, frequency. And they're showing me again before at the beginning of the conversation when we were talking about how how it's complicated for them to you know turn on a light. Like I won't change the light in my closet; it goes on and off. And I'm like, hi, Dad. I'm not going to change it to a woman. 
I'm just not going to change it because it still goes on. And it's only when I go in the closet. Interesting. Like I've had it on the whole time and it's dark. And then when I go in there, all of a sudden it'll flicker. And I know that's my dad. So I don't even want to change it. I'll live in the dark in my closet. I don't even want to change it. Anyway, to make things happen, they were showing me how, how it is a mathematical equation of time. Or So who's to say with what happened with you that they just go, okay, on this particular date, what is it going to take for this to happen? Like this timing and why, like right. there's so, it's so layered, 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 layered on the other side for them to do it here that we don't even realize what it takes. And also along those lines of mathematics, I was uh, uh, visiting a class the other day, just a couple of days ago, somebody's seeing a class, they're not under hypnosis, we're just doing a guided meditation, but I'm in a classroom and there's all these people here. I said, what's the class about? And she said, it's about mathematics and art. And I said, I, so is it, she didn't understand that? I said, you mean like, because math is ones and zeros and right. art, the creation of art, painting, photographs. What, whatever chefs anything it's all that idea it's a mathematical reality that we're doing as a construct to create that thing that we can then okay. tangibly hold on to and so over there they have an easier time of doing it because they don't have the density of you know what's keeping us from it Is right that right like food hunger sleep <laughs> Yeah. yeah, all that stuff that, that yeah. prevents us from accessing that information. And so, Luana, how are you helping people over there to communicate with us? Interesting. Huh. So I asked him, like, so how long does it take you guys to make something happen? And I got a thousand years. And I'm like, what? And they showed me lifetimes before, lifetimes after. Oh, I see. Everything to get that is, ability. Yeah. Like, like a every, student. <laughs> i'm sorry our cat i love agrees. that though. i love that that's um, her underlining what you say love back to love if you want to open up love is the highest frequency that you can possibly have to connect so, because if you're in love with yourself or you're in love with love or you're in love with somebody else, you're more open. <laughs> I think that may be the key to the planet and humanity and reality. I think you just elucidated the key to life, what life is and why we exist. And Jennifer tapped her nose for those well, listening. They were in. showing me over and over again, tapping it. But they also were saying, like, that's why you said that about Charles Broden. Love. Yeah, the love. When you say someone's the love of my life, it's not a confining idea. It's not a box. You're not somebody, you're not putting them in a box and putting them on a shelf. You're saying love as an open thing, as a uh, empathy, as connecting to all beings and all all generations we need to say it more you know we need to you know we need to say it more i need to say it more like i need to be vulnerable enough to say it to someone yeah no it's true yeah. i mean of course you know it reminds me of curb your enthusiasm larry david's show you know when the, you know when he we say something that's intimate to somebody that you're only dating after a couple of dates. It's like, oh, that's too soon. You can't go right to I love you. I well, I punched my husband more at the time when he said I love you. I'm like, you ruined it. I knocked him. <laughs> I'm like, how could you ruin it? I was and, so angry. And he's still yeah. ruining it. Gosh darn yes. it. I'm like, I love being his hostage for 20 years. <laughs> <'Cause they laughs> Very you good. Chasing you ever since. <laughs> Very good. Um All right. and, and I I know you got to go. I just want to say this, Luana, I ran across uh, when I was preparing for this interview, I found some great old photographs that you had taken of Chuck. And so I brought them to the interview. But there were other pictures of friends of yours. And I passed them all around this morning, because it was like, oh, yeah, I better do that. And so they've all weighed in, they've all reconnected to you friends of hers from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And they all sent a really lovely note saying and thank I you. have to say, well, I, 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 I didn't send him a picture, but there was something there of, of his. That's what she's that was saying. In it. Oh, she's saying I should send that to him, by the way. All right, I'll, I'll be happy to. 
Yeah. I don't know if he'll get it. It would be harder to show him from up above. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Thank All you right. so much, Jennifer. And thank you, Lou. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, and thank you, Dad, Jim. I appreciate it. All of you guys, we really appreciate you helping us do this podcast. And thanks for the people listening in. Absolutely. All right. Catch you. Love, love. Love, love. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.